It hasn't taken long for us to become a society consumed by social media and the technology that supports it, for better and for worse. It's become part of my daily life and it's actually changed my life. I almost lost my iPhone and then I finally got it back and I was, it was like a girlfriend. I'm kind of, oh, I'm so glad to see you, kind of, I missed you. It's now our way of life, a mark we're making, quite literally, on society. Every message, every click, leaving a fingerprint in cyberspace. Data is never truly deleted. It's just a state on the disk. So what are the risks and rewards of a life online? And what can we learn from ourselves, a population suddenly exposed? It's expanding the ways in which we gather information about each other. We're simply watching how people behave uh, in an open setting. While the masses are busy blogging and tweeting, chatting and posting, scientists are watching them do it. In the mathematics department at the University of Vermont, Chris Danforth and Peter Dodds are buried in social media, hoping to gain insight into the collective behavior of humans. What social media has enabled is a way to collect data at a scale that enables social scientists, psychologists, and anthropologists to learn about how people are behaving. If we can follow in detail how people behave, we can start to appreciate large groups of people, understand how societies function, how to hopefully make them better, where things go wrong. Anthropologists love this stuff, right? Right? I mean, this is exactly the study of people and society and uh, what makes us tick and who we are. By analyzing online posts, the researchers are able to observe what never before was possible and do it in real time. Conversations that used to take place in an environment where there were no, there were no devices to measure how people were behaving, those conversations are now taking place on the internet and on Twitter and on Facebook. And, uh, and so in, in some sense, we're able to look at, at, at what people are doing.